Hi guys and welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. What you see in the vise is a leggy cruncher. So without further ado, let's get into it. I'm actually tying up some of these flies for Draycott this weekend and uh, while I was doing it I thought I might as well do a tutorial. So if you're looking for a fly that you want to fish higher in the water column, you could do much worse than this one. So, the hook in the vise is a Hanak H200 barbless hook. It's on a size 12. It's a heavy wire and it's finished in black nickel. The thread I'm going to be using today is from Semperfy. It's nano silk at 12 watt. As you can see, it's a red silk. As always, with the nano silk, I'm going to put a touch of super glue onto the shank in my hook. Now, this just prevents body rotation, which uh, can happen with flies like this. And with nano silk and the nickel finish of the Hanak, it does prevent that happening. So I'll just get a bed of silk down and take away my waste. Now for the tailing fibres, all I've got here is a cock cape feather and I'm just going to take uh, about a dozen fibres off the stem. And what I want is about the length of the hook shank to protrude past the tail and I pretty much nailed that because of the length of the fibres. So I've caught that in. I'm going to come all the way up the shank, just beyond the hook. So that's my tail in place. Now, for the wire rib, I'm going to be using some 0.2 copper wire. And I've got a bit off here that I've been working with. And before I uh, do this, I'm just going to add a little bit of wax to my nano silk just to help grip onto the materials better. So I'll lay that alongside the shank of the hook and just bring it up towards the thorax area and then I'm going to come all the way back down to where I started. Now the body is uh, simply pheasant tail fibres and I'm going to take between four and five fibres I'm going to lay that alongside my rib and just catch it with a loose turn to get it into position and then I can trap that in with my thread. Now I don't have to come too far up, I want it to finish at the thorax but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put several extra turns in as I'm going to use the rotary function on my vise to lay this body down. It just get, helps you get a nice neat finish to the body. So I've caught in the fibres with my hackle pliers and I'm just going to bring that up the body and you can avoid the point of the hook by doing it this way. If you have a vice that has a rotary function of course, if not you're just going to have to painstakingly bring that up the body. Now I've lost a, a fibre of pheasant tail there on the way, I'm not going to lose much sleep over that if I can catch it, I will. If not, I'll pull it away. And because I've used so many fibres here, it should be no problem. So I'll just take that away. And let's see if I can just patch this up. Just go around a couple of turns. And I'll catch that. Forgive my fingers. Just like so. And then I can just take that little bit of waste away. Now I'm going to bring my copper wire towards myself and I want at least four turns in here on a size 12 and I will definitely lose one of them turns when I come to tie in the thorax. So once I've got the wire trapped in, I can just keep tension on my thread, helicopter that away, put it to the side for the next fly. So far so good. Again, I'm going to just add a little bit of wax to my silk and I'm going to invert my vise. Now the next thing I'm going to do is add in my legs. Now I've got some pre-tied ones here which are save you a lot of time tying them yourself or 
forcing your kids to tie them as I used to do when I was much younger. Uh, I want to get two either side really. Once I've separated them on the stem, I split them into two clumps and I'm going to have come either side of the hook. The knots I want around the bend, just to give me that leg. And then I can just catch that in with a few turns. Now before I bring my vise back, I can come in with my scissors and just remove the waste there. Then pop the vise back round. That's looking okay. Now I've still got my four turns of wire that I can see there, which is ideal. Next thing then, I've got some peacock herald here. I don't want the eye. I want one of these fibers off the bottom of the stem. And I'm just going to take away the little white bit where I've pulled it from the stem. Then I can catch that in. So just while I'm doing this section here, how I would fish this as part of a team, um, depending on what the conditions are at the fishery. I'll either fish it on a washing line, if the fish are high in the water, uh, with a fab or a booby on the point, and if the sun comes out, and I believe, believe it or not, it's going to be 25 degrees. Uh, we're in October, and it's going to be 25 degrees. I can hardly believe it. But um, there we go, that's where we are with the weather in this country this year. Been a bit mental. So I'll just trap that herl in. Then I can just pull it away. It's very delicate stuff. Uh, and as I was saying, so washing line when the, the, we've got some cloud cover. If it's going to be really sunny, I'll probably put something a little bit heavier on the point and fish these up. So I'm just getting down through the layers a little bit. Now... The hackle I'm going to use is uh, this Greenwells. It's very soft. It's a very soft hackling material. And let me select a feather from it. Now with a lot of the hackling, and you'll see in other videos, that people tend to tie in at the tips of the feather and then bring it round to hackle. Now for this particular fly, I like to catch it in at the bottom. So I've just stripped off a little bit to catch in there. And I'll come in and get that caught. Perfect. Then I can come in with my hackle pliers, grab the tip of the feather, and then bring it around the shank. Now, as regards to turns, if, you, if you're tying these for a friend or you're tying them commercially, you probably want to count the turns. I tend to just tie until I'm happy that I've got the coverage I require. And then I'll come in and trap the tip. Now I'm not worried about this mess at the front that you see here. Here we can sort that out momentarily. But I'll take my hackle pliers away. I'm going to damp down the thumb and forefingers on my left hand. Then I'm going to slick everything back behind the hook eye. Now, once I've done that, I can concentrate on building a little head. Now, because this is nano silk, the red in it tends to be a little muted compared to if you were to get a, a uni thread, for example, or a, a natural cord thread. The, the nano silk, it doesn't hold colour particularly well, but that works in my favour on this occasion because I want this sort of muted red head. Now, I've not forgotten about the little tag here. Uh, I was just waiting to finish the fly and then I can just pull that away. It comes away no problem. And then if we just manipulate our hackle to get it lying how we want it, we can finish off with a touch of varnish. Now, you can do this with a needle. Uh, I've got a little brush here that I've trimmed down for the, the purpose of this. And I'll just go around. I don't want to put lots of uh, varnish on it. It works just well 
with one coat. And as you can see, I've got muted little red head. It's a very natural buggy looking fly. Uh, and it should work well at Draco. I'll, uh, I'll let you know in the video. <laughs> Thanks for watching, folks. And I'll see you all in the next one.